Welcome back, my name is Aaron Landing, your favorite Realtor. Now I live in Menifee and I love Menifee, but today we are talking about pricing your house for sale. Let's go. Now, is there really an art to pricing your house? Someone's gonna buy it no matter what, right? And I mean, if I price it too high, they're just gonna offer whatever they want. Or I could always come down and price later, but I don't wanna lose money, so let's start high. I mean, determining the right price for your home is absolutely crucial. Whether it's a buyer or seller's market, doesn't matter. The pricing strategy can truly influence the final amount you pocket from the sale. And sadly, I've noticed many sellers leaving money on the table in today's hot seller's market due to incorrect pricing strategies. Today, I'm gonna to guide you away from some of these common pitfalls. So, a couple things for you to consider. Securing multiple offers on your home significantly affects the negotiation power. Think about it, having multiple offers allows us to negotiate upward, revealing the true market value of your home. So I'm gonna be walking you through how value is determined and we'll debunk some misconceptions that don't impact home's value. And we'll be unveiling some biases that can sway pricing strategy negatively. And when I'm determining a home's value, we gotta start with the understanding of supply and demand, especially for similar homes like yours in your local market that have closed within the last six months. Relative value is directly linked to what other potential buyers can find on the day they're in your market to purchase a home. So active listings also play a huge role here as that is your current competition. And it's crucial to understand that values aren't static. They fluctuate based on the market supply and demand dynamics. And there are certain misconceptions about what influences a home's value that I'd like to clarify. Factors like tax assessment, insurance estimate, your mortgage balance, past purchase price, or personal financial needs do not impact the fair market value of your home. These points, they often come up, but they're irrelevant when it comes to a buyer assessing your home's worth. I just turned down a seller who said they needed to sell for XYZ amount because they had some private debt they needed to take care of. And my simple question to them was, do you think a buyer will pay 100K over a model match to your house to help you with your private debt? debt? Nah, not even close. Even family doesn't do that. So chill out. Hey, whoa, hey, yo, oh. chill, 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 man. It's crazy what some people think to be honest. Now, it's also important to acknowledge any biases when determining your home's value. Everyone involved, including homeowners, real estate agents, and potential buyers, we all hold some biases that can sway perception. Recognizing these and mitigating these is essential to avoid making costly pricing errors. To owner, a house is often like a child, is to a parent. It's perfect, right? The sooner we realize your house isn't perfect, the sooner we can talk about the real numbers. And it might not make sense to sell your house, which any decent agent would be okay with that. But if you do sell, you have to understand the buyer's mindset. This is key. What are they seeing? How are they searching? What influences their decision-making process? And as a seller, you wield tons of power to choose the competition by setting the price. And you want to strategically set your price to attract buyers within their search ranges. That's how you're gonna increase your chances of generating interest and multiple offers. So as far as pricing goes, stick to pricing around 25K price increments. 625, 650, 675, 700, for example. I often see houses at 699, 999. And what that $1 does is if a buyer and agent have their alert set up for 700,000 to 800,000, that 699999, they'll never see your home online. Hence, they'll probably never see it in person. So most alerts I set for myself and for my clients who are buying a home are in the $100,000 range. So it's very foolish to set the price like it's something that's being sold in Walmart. And I do understand there is a mindset with ending and a price of 99. I just do not see it being super effective in real estate. Also, aim for a pricing strategy that strategically positions your home slightly below its potential market value to attract attention, create competition among buyers. And this approach often yields way better results than overpricing and negotiating downwards. And many buyers do not even take the time to look at overpriced listings because they generally represent a seller who is going to be unreasonable. But if you price it right, the rule of thumb is for every 10 showings, we should have one to two offers. So if we do not have that, then to the consumer, it's either price or condition of the home. You may be priced right for the square feet, but your condition 
needs too much work. So there's a lot of things to consider and I address this weekly with my listings because again, it can always change. So I hope this helps you. Thank you for tuning in. Your support means a lot. Please like, follow, subscribe if you haven't yet and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.